discretion is advised. Edmund Kemper. He is known for killing six women in Santa Cruz, California, and some of his family members. Starting his crimes, at age 15, Edmund killed both his grandparents because he wanted to see, quote unquote, what it felt like. When he was released, he started drifting female hitchhikers. Then he stopped drifting where instead of letting them go, he would kill them. He killed six women in Santa Cruz, California. And the, the time setting of this is in the 1970s. Another notable kill is when he killed his mother and her friend. And then he turned himself in. That happened in 1973. Let's move forward to his early life. Edmund was born on December 18, 1948 in Burbank, California. He was a middle child. He often had a difficult relationship with his alcoholic mother. She was very critical of him and would, he would blame her for everything. His mother had forced him to live in the basement when he was 10 for the fear that he might harm them. His signs had come early. He had dreams of killing his mom and other horrible things. His first victims to go were the family cats. He buried one alive and the other one slew with a knife. He went to go stay with his gr paternal grandparents in North Folk, North Folk, California. Sorry for stuttering, it happens. The one thing Edmund hated was living on that farm. On the day, August 27th, 1964, he would murder his grandparents. He did it by shooting his grandmother in the kitchen after a fight. When his grandpa would return home, he shot him and hit his body. For all his crimes so far, he was sent to California Youth Authority, where he underwent various tests, and it would conclude that he had a very high IQ, but he also suffered from paranoid schizophrenia. Then he was sent to Atascadero State Hospital, a maximum security place for mentally ill convicts. His release occurred in 1969. He was 21. Even with doctor's recommendation to not let him live with his mother, he rejoined her in Santa Cruz. Edmund applied for state trooper, but he was rejected for his size. He weighed 300 pounds, and he was 6 feet and 9 inches tall. That's why his nickname is Big Ed. Edmund and did have some police officer friends, and they just let him borrow training, school badges, handcuffs, and even, even a gun. In the same year, well, in the time setting now, 1971, Edmund was hit by a car while on his motorcycle. His arm was injured badly, and he got a $15,000 settlement in a lawsuit he filed. Since he was unable to work, he turned his head to other kind of per pursuits. He then found a large number of young women hitchhiking in the area. He started getting all of the tools and supplies he needed for his new murderous thoughts. But he has gotten s some of the supplies. Remember those cop friends? Yeah, they sent him a gun and handcuffs. In the first encounter, he let the female hitchhikers go. However, the next time when he offered a ride to two Fresno State students, their names being Mary Ann Fesk and Anita Luchessa, they didn't make it. No one would know what happened to them until August 15th, when the female head was discovered in the woods at Santa Cruz. That head was identified as Peshit. Luchessa's remains are yet to be found. After he killed them both, he said he brought back the bodies to his apartment where he removed their heads and hands. He also engaged with sexual activity with their bodies. Later that year, on September 14, 1972, Kemper picked up 15-year-old Echo Ko. She decided that she wanted to hitchhike and then wait for the bus. She died the same way as Luchessa and Pesh on January 13, 1973. Kemper contended his murderous plans, thinking of Cindy Shaw, whom he shot, hid his body in his room. He threw parts of her body into the ocean. Parts were discovered when they washed up on shore, and he buried her head in his mother's backyard. On February 5th, 1973, Kemper used a like mother had given him to create a double murder. He drove to the university, where he offered rise to two students, Rosalind Thorpe and Elise Liu. Shortly after, he shot both women. Then he drove past security gates, with, and then he drove security gates where the, with the two women in his car. After the murder, Kemper decapitated the two victims, and then he disembodied the corpses. In March, some of Thorpe's and Liu's remains were discovered by hikers near Highway One, in San Mateo County. In April 1973, Kemper committed his final two murders. On Good Friday, he went to his mother's home, where they both had an unpleasant talk. When she went to sleep, he struck her head with a hammer and cut her throat with a knife. He decapitated her and cut off both her hands. This time, he had put her larynx down in the garbage disposal. After hiding his mother's body parts, he invited her mother's friend, Sally Hallett, over, and he strangled her and then put her body in a closet. He ran away from the area and would head east to a wood Pueblo, Colorado. April 
23rd, he confessed his crimes. He was charged with eight counts of first-degree murder. He went for trial in October 1973. He was found guilty of all his charges in early November. When the judge asked what Ted Kemper thought his punishment should be, he said tortured to death. Instead of that, he received eight life sentences. Currently, he is spending time and at California Mental Facility in Vacaville. Thank you for your time, everyone.